All right, so I've been making tutorials for about a year uh, or so on this channel. And I believe, of course, that if you've been watching my videos, you've probably seen a few and you've also probably skipped a few of the video tutorials. So I thought that for today's video, I actually wanted to make a video which talks about the five things that you're probably not doing while working in Procreate. So even though you may have skipped a couple videos or a few videos here on this channel, there's still here a chance for you to see the roundup of the top five things that you could be missing while working in Procreate. My name is Leigh when you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get to it. All right, so number one, starting up this list, super simple, but there's a lot of people who actually don't do that and actually spend a lot of time going around the application, selecting different brushes from different subfolders, but it's all about saving your favorite brushes into a separate subfolder called your favorites. All right, so taking a look, for example, at this illustration here that I'm making, this is one of my current, my latest illustrations. I'm making this illustration with several brushes. So if you take a closer look here, I do have like a sketch layer that, that I'll just turn off for a second, but going into my brush library, I'm definitely using, for example, an ink brush that has pen pressure and that I'm actually using on these very like small lines here. I'm using different uh, pen kind of pressure strokes and uh, that's just one of the uh, brushes. I'm also using my noise brush and then I'm using this noise and I'm adding some Gaussian blur so that I'm getting these very like nice shaded areas. So really the tip for this video is that all of these brushes, they're actually for a lot of them, they're brushes that come with Procreate and I will have to be going on and off here, for example, I know the noise brush lives in the touch-up section. So I would have to go here into touch-ups, select noise brush. And not only I would be uh, kind of fiddling and changing settings from the, the actual brush that comes with Procreate, but I will have to be going. So now, for example, going back into that pressure brush, it's probably here in, in uh, inking actually. And I'll, I will find that maybe, let's just say this is, uh, is this one, syrup. So I would be, as I work, I would be going all over the place, selecting different brushes from different subfolders. So the quick tip here really is that you can just slide to the left, any brush here, you can select duplicate. And then if you go here at the very top, if you scroll down the brush library, you see this like little plus. So you can make a new set and I'm just gonna call this favorites two, because I already have one. And now going back into my inking section, I can just select this copy of my brush, which usually Procreate adds a one next to the name, but you can also just tap on a brush, go into the about section and rename this brush. You can do whatever you want, but I'm just gonna cancel this and go back into the new uh, subfolder there, select the syrup one and just drop it into the favorites. So now, as you can see, we have the copy of that brush that we just made into my favorite subfolder. And now just going back to my actual favorites folder, I have the ones that I use the most for the art style that I'm creating. I always have those into my favorite subfolder. They have very quick access. And also the best thing here is that by making copies of the brushes that actually came with Procreate, some of these brushes here I've actually created myself, but for the ones that come with Procreate, making a copy, actually it's almost making a backup. So now I can change their settings, I can change their options, and if I actually uh, do something here that I really don't like, if I make the brush somehow unusable, I can always go back into the original one and make a new fresh copy. Second one in this list, especially if you're working in high resolution files and you wanna overcome the layer limitation that Procreate actually has, even when you're dealing with the highest and best iPad Pro model out there, is saving your work into separate files as you go. All right, so now let's talk about the limitation, the layer limitation that Procreate has on any kind of iPad model, even if you're using the latest iPad Pro model, if you're making illustrations or canvases that are high resolution canvases. So anything really uh, like over 4K, I would say, especially for this model here, of the iPad Pro that I have starts to get a little bit, um, you know, too scarce in terms of layers. So let me give you the best example here, which is what I have right here. This illustration right here of this like girl, I've actually, you know, started with a sketch. Then I've made all of the layers, all, all of the base layers and colors that I wanted. Then I started playing around with a little bit of texturing. 
and the uh, texturing work got a little bit more intense here. And what I really want to show you is starting with this file, just so I can show you all of these layers, all of the layers that you see here are layers of texture that have been just playing around. And the base layer or the layer that has all of, all of the illustration is all merged in one layer. So how was I able to do this? That That is once again, saving your file into steps. So going back into the sketch format from this one, if we go into this illustration and I open up, you can see that all of these layers here, for example, there's the rosy cheeks here on the character, just turning that on and off. So this file is a 4K file, is the same resolution file on all of these, uh, all of these canvases, all of these illustration files. And because it's a 4K, if I just go into the actions menu, we're gonna go into the subsection canvas and then canvas information. As you can see, it is a 4K file, 4K square. It's got 300 DPI. But when I go into layers, really from the maximum amount of layers which I have on this iPad model, I have just about 28 layers and I only have, I think here, I, I actually have zero layers available. So there's really not a chance even for me to actually start exploring texturing for this illustration because I actually needed, or like at least in this copy, I have used all of the 28 layers so that I can change the color of the hair of this character in a much easier way by just dropping a color to the layer of the hair section. So by having this file, what I did is then I just went back into the gallery, hit select, selected our illustration and made a duplicate. And Procreate is just going to take its time because it's a high resolution file, make a copy. And now inside this new copy, also make sure to save your, uh, you know, put names on your illustration so that you know which steps you are actually in. So for example, here I could put step one, step two, step three, so on and so forth. Or I can name it, you know, sketch phase, uh, base layer, texturing work, anything that really, you know, works best for you. But now just going back into one of these files, once I go into the duplicate here, I can now merge all of the layers from the base layer. Maybe I won't need, uh, maybe I won't merge the background, for example, but then I can start once again with more layers to play with. So that is really the one way that I found here in order to keep my work in case I need to do any changes. So you still have your work as live because if you merge everything and then if you're doing this not for yourself, but if this is client work, you may actually run into some trouble because you, if there are any changes, any feedback coming down the pipe, you may have to actually redo a lot of sections or a few sections if everything is merged into one layer. And the other plus is that by making these copies, I can then work on other sections such as texturing, light and shadows, because I've then merged the necessary layers so that I can continue working. Number three in this list, and if you're a freelancer, this could be really, really important, but also if you're a hobbyist enthusiast and just doing drawings on Procreate, this could also be something very meaningful for you, is using the canvas information in the illustration that you're currently working. So since we were just talking about canvas information, this is actually the number three in this list. It's talking about canvas information. A lot of people know about canvas information, but a lot of you guys maybe not are not familiar with canvas information. So what is canvas information? How do you access it? And what are the best use cases for canvas information? The reason why using canvas information, you can check your hours spent on each illustration and know if you're actually getting faster with the same results. So, how do we actually access the canvas information? It's actually a little bit hidden, but you have to go back into the actions menu and it's not into preferences, it's actually back into canvas and is the last option here on the canvas section. And this is the canvas information and a lot of the things here you actually cannot change. So of course you can recrop your work, you can resize your canvas in another option but you can't really go here into canvas information and tap these numbers and change these numbers. You can't really change the DPI. You can't really change here any anything about the amount of layers, but it's the statistics here, it's the numbers that are really, really important. For example, when I created this illustration and I've made sure that it was about a 2K file, which is a 2K kind of square file, 
And uh, the reason why I chose 2K at 300 dpi is that I knew that I was going to get a decent amount of layers because I really wanted to explore with this mountain illustration. This mountain illustration is also one of the uh, my latest kind of speed paint videos, which I also provide the file for you guys to color, learn how to draw and exercise your skills. And I'll link it to the top side here of this video. But here, just looking at the maximum layers that I have, I have plenty to work with. I have 124 layers maximum and I've used so far only 27, still have 97 layers to play with. That is some really, really important information because, you know, going back to the file that I was just showing before on the previous tip, if we go back into this girl illustration, and I think this is one of the texturing files, let's just go into the canvas information layers. As you can see, the maximum amount of layers is 28. I've used in this copy, I've used 26 layers and I've only got two layers left. If you only have two layers left, this is definitely something you wanna know. It's definitely something you wanna know as you're working with because it's basically telling me I gotta merge something here if I run out of layers and if I wanna continue to explore things. Another thing that's really, really important, just going back into the file that I was just showing you guys. So opening our mountain illustration and uh, I'm not sure. Yes, so this appears to be the original one. We're just gonna go back into the actions menu, canvas information, and now we're gonna go into statistics. And as you can see, I've spent about three hours and 40 minutes making this. You know, it wasn't a, like a one go. I, I didn't do this in like a one sitting of just three hours and 40 minutes, but it may have been like, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. But just knowing that I've spent this amount of time, if this was some freelance work, I could say, for example, that I've spent almost kind of like half a day to make this illustration. So if I know what my day rate is, I can say that that illustration cost me at least on my side half a day. I can then prepare a bit of a better budget or, you know, uh, if I'm making more of these illustrations, I know how much they cost from my own time, from my own work time. And then I can, you know, make a better proposition for the client knowing how much time I've actually spent on this illustration. Number four is setting up the quick menu, which is something I know I've talked a lot in my previous videos, but setting the quick menu with options and your favorite brushes. Now for this one, guys, is something that I've also talked quite a bit here in the tutorial videos for this channel, which is to use the quick menu. What is the quick menu? When is best to use it? And how do we use it? Quick menu is a way for you to get into a few sections here, a few options on Procreate much faster than by, you know, extending your hands back into either the menu on the left side of Procreate or the menu on the right side of Procreate. What I mean by that is that for this quick menu here, and it's fully customizable just uh, right from the get go, I've actually set for my top option here, I've set new layer. So here I've already created a new layer. If I go into my layers panel, you see that I've created a new layer. I didn't have to go all the way to the top right, hit the layers panel, hit the plus and create it, create a new layer. I can also, if I tap and hold, I can start painting. I can do, um, this is actually one of the brushes, but in fact, what I had here in the past, I'm just gonna tap and hold and this is how we change options on the quick menu. I'm just gonna go all the way back here. Uh, just gonna go into the options and I'm gonna say I want to erase. So now I have painting and then if I go with just even with the finger, I can just I can just touch and hold and just slide to the option that I have. So I'm touching and holding paint, touch and hold erase. And that is very, very fast, much faster than me going all the way to the top right all of the time, especially if you're not left handed like me, because now you're drawing with this hand. So you're really exercising your drawing, you know, making strokes here, but also going back here into the menu. So there's lots of actually good things for you to actually use the quick menu. How do we activate quick menu? Well, we have to go into the actions menu, preferences, and we're gonna tap into gesture controls. Now here in gesture controls, we're gonna find quick menu, and then you're going to choose the best way to activate quick menu on your side. At least in my opinion, I'm using the tap, the um, actually, sorry, this is not the best way that I wanna actually invoke quick menu, but it's going to be a touch and hold feature right here at the bottom. I think that in a previous video, I was just showing how there are other ways to evoke the quick menu. So I'm going to choose the touch and hold with actually the delay. It's going to be very short. And the reason for that is that I don't have to touch and hold and be holding for long. 
So here I've just set up to about 0.15 of a second. So I'm just going to hit done. And that is the way to actually, you know, bring it, bring in the quick menu onto your appropriate canvas. Now, the last thing that I would just want to show you, which was what I just did here with the arrays, is that if you look here at the at this bottom option, let me just go let, let me just go here and select from my favorites list. I'm just going to choose, for example, Studio Pen, where we are in our new layer. It's going to do a stroke, so you can see I'm using my Studio Pen brush. Now, touch and hold, select this bottom option, which was called Sticks. Now I'm on a completely different brush. So what's really, really cool about Quick Menu is that not only gives you options and actions to do on Procreate, but also touching and holding on an option itself allows you to just navigate down to select brush. And now from your list of brushes, you can also select at least six. You can go up to six here, but I've, uh, for now, I've just left about two brushes. So doing an illustration, the two most used brushes that I'm doing here, I can set those as my Quick Menu. So I'm going to go, for example, sketching, sketching and select peppermint. Now I have peppermint here and it's a, it's a really small kind of like thin kind of sketch brush. But as you can see, it is here. And now if I touch and hold again, go sticks, I'm using the other brush. So how fast it is for me to actually switch brushes without having to go into the brush library, go through subfolders once again, even going through your favorites. You really don't need to even open the brush library if you're using the quick menu option. And now for number five and the last one in this list is a tip to save some battery life, especially if you're on the go with your iPad using Procreate, but also to set up a custom background color from your canvas presets. Now for the last one, guys, this is super simple, but this is something that a lot of people also don't know. But once we're creating a new canvas here on Procreate, there's always that little uh, you know, button right here just below the plus icon and that is to create a new canvas preset. With that, you may be familiar, you can set the resolution of your canvas. So let's just say 2000 by 2000. We can say it's 300 DPI. You get a preview of the number of layers. You can choose your color profile. So right here from the beginning, you can say, if you do wanna work on RGB and which color profile from an RGB, you know, P3 or sRGB, for example, two of the most used ones. Or if you wanna go CMYK, if this file is definitely going to go for one of the traditional ways of, of printing process, but let's just stick to RGB for now. You can choose the time lapse settings, you know, videos, and uh, you can choose 4K, 2K, 1080p. You can choose between lossless, good quality, and all that stuff. But what I really want to show you guys is that on the last tab, Canvas Properties, and there are only two options, but those two options could be hugely helpful. One is that you can click on this little dot, this little white dot here, and that is your background color. If you set this, for example, you can also change this. So if you don't want to use with the color circle, you can just use the classic way. And let's just say we want to set this to gray. Now, by doing that and giving this a name, uh, let's just say new, new canvas. Now you have a canvas, which I'll just create, hit create here starts with a gray background, saves you battery life. And if this is a background that you're actually more accustomed to actually choose colors, because using a neutral gray will really help you to pick the right colors. If you choose a white or black background, your colors can be either over or undersaturated. Using a gray value will guarantee that you're using the right amount of saturation in your colors. So starting with this, you're saving battery life and you're probably doing yourself a favor when choosing colors for your next illustration. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these videos once they come out again on this channel. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch. There's my latest upload and a video that YouTube is recommending for you to watch in order to expand your skills and become a better digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.